Well, welcome everybody. We're so excited to have you all here. Um, I'm Dr. Zilana Momini. Oh, and I just hit my mic. Um, I'm a television reporter, and I am um, a doctor in psychology and certified in nutrition. And I have a 20-month-old little boy. And I'm also due with my second uh, in August. So um, this session is about, uh, we're going to be talking about finding the balance between career and, and motherhood. And I just wanted to thank you all for coming here and joining us. And we'd love to continue the conversation too. So please feel free to tweet, Facebook, you know, tweet us. You can find our handles and all our speaker bios on the website, fertilityplanet.com. You can also hashtag us at FPLA14 so we can keep the conversation going. Um, and we wanted to thank our sponsor, Works by Nicole Williams, for supporting this conversation. And Nicole is also a LinkedIn's career expert, which is neat. So now it's my great pleasure to introduce you to our panel. We have um, Tamiko Fraser Hines, who is a model and a host, and so many other things, which we'll talk about. Um, Kelly Martin, actress and owner of Romp Store. Um, we have founder of Relicious, Catherine McCord. And Coco Brown is an actress and a comedian. So welcome, ladies. I'd love to hear from each of you, and we can just go in order, kind of about what your journey ha has been like becoming a mother, and how you've you know balanced your career in motherhood. And if there was just a moment, um, briefly, where you actually realized that balance might be tough. <laughs> this is not going to be easy. <laughs> if there's just something that you know really. Got yeah, that. that's uh, we don't have enough time for my journey, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's we'll just, that let's that just <laughs> say that it was a long journey, and I'm glad finally that we are the parents of 14 month old twin boys named Bryce and Caden. And um, what was the other point? The other point of the question? Um, just you know, how, how it felt to make that shift, you know, between having a career and becoming a mother, and if there's ever sort of a moment where you realize that balance would be would be tougher, tougher the than we shift, think. The shift was really easy for me because I have been wanting for years to become a mother. So I was ready to put my career on the side burner for a little while. I'm still on the side burner with it and happily so. And um, I'm still going out on audition. So I do find that moment where if it's a job that I know is going to take me away from home mm -hmm. for a couple of days or a week or so, I get a little freaked out, like I want the job, right. but then I'm like, ooh, I will, I'll be away from the boys mm -hmm. for a while. So yeah. that's something that I'm still working out. Okay, great, mm -hmm. great. Um, I have a daughter, um, seven, Maggie, and um, I have been working since I was seven, um, which by the way, my daughter reminds me of. She's like, I can start working now, mommy. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> um, so, so I started working at such a young age, so work um, has always actually defined me, and I was determined not to be defined by motherhood, actually. I was, having a baby was, um, was really, it was exciting, and I had a great pregnancy, great birth, all of that. But once I became a mom, I think I really had an internal battle. And I don't know if it was officially um, postpartum depression, but I was very, it was really hard for me to imagine just being home with my daughter and just like feeding her and diapering her. It was, it was really hard for me. Um, so I think the balance was really scary at first that I, I thought I would lose who I was as a person and just become a mother. And that's not what I wanted. Um, so I'd say maybe once she like got to preschool, I realized that I could do both, that I could be a mom and that I could still be Kelly um, and still do my job. I mean, I started working again when she was five months old and I'd be like, they'd be knocking on my dressing room door and I'd be pumping. I'm like, just wait, just wait, you know, and you can't pump when you're upset and nervous. So, um, so it's, it's been really a, a journey for me and it's fraught with um, a lot of emotion and I'm so glad I have her and I love being a mother, but it's really hard. It's really hard. I don't know if I answered your question. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> honest, just honest and, and real. We love it. We'll uh, get back to that too. Catherine. Well, I had gone to culinary school and worked in a lot of restaurants and catering companies and was very passionate about my career in, in food. And when I had my son, uh, we had always shopped at my husband and I for 13 years uh, at the farmer's markets in Los Angeles. And when I had my son, I sort of was like, well, what the hell am I supposed to feed you? Like, I mean, I, I can make an adult meal, a gourmet meal, but I don't know, baby food was sort of, 
And I went online and um, really tried to like figure out how to make a kid a great eater from day one. There was very little information. So, you know, part of my journey became this I, I really lucked into being able to work from home, and I created an entire business um, where I'm able to stay home and take my kids to school and be such a part of their life, but I still get to travel, and my husband and I really support each other, making sure that we get to, because um, I like Kelly, like I've worked since I was 13, full, I mean, full time, so um, it, it so defines me, but it's also so my passion. And I, I was on a work trip um, last week, and I was feeling really guilty. I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. Just guilty about being away. And my girlfriend said, you know what? Both of my parents worked, and they loved their work. And that's the one thing that I keep in my mind. And it made me feel so much better, because I think if you tell your children, I love what I do, and work can be fun, then I think that the experience for the child and the guilt of working as a parent um, can be a little bit alleviated. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, um, I'm Coca, and uh, you know, I, I became a single mother by default. Um, I was married, and um, in the course of me being pregnant, I realized my husband and I were not gonna make it. And uh, when I went to shoot a single mom's club in Atlanta for two months, my husband was moving out. And at the time, my child was only four months old. So I got thrust into being a single mother, and I didn't know I was going to be a full-fledged single mother because when he left, he left, he left. So <laughs> but luckily for me, you know, I came from a very traditional Southern family. I went to college. I got a degree. I was supposed to get married, have some babies, call it a life. And I went really left and became a stand-up comic. <laughs> and I, you know, I had 15 years of a, being a road comic, of being living out of a suitcase, going to different cities, and that's how I lived. And so when I became a mother, um, it was something that was always ingrained in me. I think I was born to be a mother. And so I kind of just adjusted everything and said, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm a mama now, so this is how you're going to be able to go with me. I have a three-day rule. I don't leave my son for more than three days. He's 22, 23 months old now. He'll be two next month. I'm trying to get into the thing of saying two because saying 36 months sounds crazy. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, um, I've been blessed with an incredible village for whatever reason. Um, I have had an incredible brotherhood of male friends for whatever reason. When my husband and I split up and I became a single mom with this little boy, they all just swooped in and, and did everything in their power to fill that void. You know, I have like a joke that I say that one day my sons may be at a recital or a football game and they're gonna be like, you know, Phoenix, where is your dad? He going, they all up there. <laughs> <laughs> because he has so many daddies, you know, and I even have a male nanny, I have a manny. So he, <laughs> he's never gonna lack for a positive male role model. Um, you know, it's funny, I never had the, the guilt of leaving him because I worked up until the day before my water broke. I was really on a stage the night before and the next day my water broke and I said, oop, guess I won't be telling jokes today. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, then right after that, you know, eight weeks later, I was in Vancouver shooting a TV show. So it's just something that's ingrained with me and my child just kind of goes with me. And I think he's used to it because he was in my belly because it doesn't phase him. We get on the plane, he's excited. We get to hotel rooms. He's like, ooh, all this room. He <laughs> And now that he's going to preschool, you know, I'm now having to leave him more because I want him to be you know, I don't want him to miss any, you know, great fundamental stuff that he's learning or whatever. But um, it, it gets tough now because he's every time I come home, it's a new phrase, it's a new word, it's a new action. But I tell myself every day, I do this all for him. And until God Almighty sees fitness in me, another baby daddy, I gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> And I, you know, and I pick with him and I say, you like that Elmo, don't you? Yes, mommy can call it Elmo. Mommy has to work so she can call it Elmo. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's tough, but I, I, I'm grateful. That's why I'm so adamant about utilizing your village. I have an incredible village. And it's crazy because my village is guys. For whatever reason, I've been blessed with a lot of fathers. That's wonderful. <laughs> No, it really does take a village and a community. Yeah. Um, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to sort of cater my questions to specific people, but we can all, you know, if we ha all have something to share, we can feel free to comment. This is a conversation more than anything. So we're going to start with Catherine. Um, so, you know, so many people out there, you know, are, are blogging and really trying to create something amazing. And um, 
I'd love to hear from you about how you eventually, you know, had the bandwidth and the, you know, even the, the, the inkling to start what you're doing and your blog and your business and, and really, you know, make it something amazing. Like, is it possible to have an amazing, you know, career and also be a great mother? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, even for my blog, I mean, it started me taking pictures of homemade baby food. Yeah. I asked a lot of friends to help me. I didn't know how to set up a blog. Right. I didn't know how to brand. I didn't know how to do all yeah. the things that it took. Um, and believe me, even in the beginning, I would take pictures and some people were like, looks like vomit. I mean, it doesn't look like, what is that? You know, I mean, I had to learn to be a photographer. I had to learn so many different skills, started shooting videos, you know, learned to be a writer. I mean, all these different things. But um, it came out of passion and lucky for me, my children are my business. They're my, my test audience all day. So the foods that I create, I'm really trying to make cooking easy for parents, but make kids great eaters. So, you know, so much of that balance and learning is the passion. Um, but I think it's like you said, it's, it's, I'm, I'm hopefully doing it for them and watching them get inspired, I think, is, is, is really cool. But I think that um, whenever you can bring in your children and have them that learn from you, um, you know, and, and I get excited about what they get into and just, I think, always, like, learning from each other. Yeah, no, and I think that's true. You know, and you mentioned working from home, and, and while, you know, that seems like an ideal, I also do too, partly. Um, you know, there's always moments where, you know, my son's banging on my door like, Mama, Mama, you know, and he wants my attention, and it's it's a tough balance. So how do you balance that? I mean, there are moments where you truly can't be with them, right? I was when working you're... from home this morning, yeah. and we had a video crew there, and it's, you know, it's there, you know, it's a lot of negotiation, a lot of deep breath, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's not their fault that I have to work at home, right. and I really try to remember that. This is their home, and I'm trying to work from home, so constantly um you know definitely balancing that um but you know saying like this is mommy i need i need 30 minutes <coughs> and then you can come in so mm -hmm. they got to use the microphone this morning and they got to like you know do their thing so yeah. um you know working from home is a gift but it's also you have to be able to know what you're getting yourself into right, and prioritize and prioritize definitely. definitely so what role does your spouse have in supporting you and your career because I know for me, I mean, I couldn't do what I do without my spouse's support and partner, you know, so I'm just curious. We, I mean, we both were very, he, he's a film producer, yeah. so he went and did a movie for four months this right. year. And we, so when the times that he goes off for four months, I'm mama number one. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I shot a TV show the past three months, and he really was mm -hmm. in there. I mean, he, you know, he's still working and has long hours. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes a village. I yes. mean, it takes yes. takes yes. grandparents and friends and babysitters and you know, mm -hmm. it takes everything. But the one thing that I learned very early with my son, especially, was um, being able. What a gift for your child to be able to separate with another person you trust. Right. You you want? I used to be like, God, my son just went off really easy, and my nanny was like, That's awesome. That's what yeah. you want. Yes. You don't yes. want them like all. Oh, yeah. Know, you want them to feel secure. Absolutely. And I can tell you, you know, as a psychologist myself, it's it's crucial to have them form and forge relationships with people other than ourselves, and that's that's part of growth and development. So that's really wonderful too. Great. So to me, for I want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, you know, having been in the modeling business myself years ago, it's it's a tough business. And, um, you know, especially when you have children. So did you find yourself, you know, delaying having children because of the impact it would have on your career? Or hmm. what was that? I don't think you? that I delayed it. What mm -hmm. life delayed me. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't get married until I was 38. I didn't have my uh, I didn't have my children until I was 44. I'm 45, 46 next Ooh. month. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. I know. Um, <laughs> I do know. I'm, it's, in, it's a genes. It's nothing to do with me. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I think I was so immersed in my career as a model mm -hmm. that I knew when I did have children that I'd be okay with that transition because I did everything that I wanted to do as far as modeling was concerned okay. and got to travel and broke barriers. I was the first um, African-American novel for Maybelline. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a trivia question now. <laughs> <laughs> Tamiko Fraser-Hines, remember that, you'll get a point. Um, 
So I, it wasn't really hard right. for me. Like I, when I, when I got pregnant finally, and we'll mm -hmm. get more into that later, I was so happy to do so. So like I said, my career, they're kind of wanting me to come back now. And I'm like, but I'm home with the babies. I want to be home with the babies. So. Yeah, it's nice to hear that perspective because I think, you know, we we all touched upon the feelings of guilt. I yeah. certainly have that myself. You seem really, you know, just confident and happy being being at home with your children too mm -hmm. and sort of balancing that. Given how much you've invested in, in having children, do you ever find yourself struggling with guilt, sort of striving for both? You know, eventually, you know, you do want your career, mm -hmm. you know, so do you? Well, what, what I'm trying to work out, like uh, like Catherine, is yeah. to be able to work from home. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I do uh, virtual life coaching. I write a blog. I am going to be doing more motivational speaking that will take me, you know, take me away sometimes. But for the most part, I'm working it so that I can be close to home and be with them. And the guilt will come, like I was explaining, if I am up for a job that I know is going to take me out of town for several days. I want the job, but then I'm like, ooh, do I really want to be away from the boys for, for that long? I'm brand new at this. I'm, they're only 14 months old, so I haven't gotten sick of them yet. Um, like people get yeah. sick of their kids and they need a Give break. A yeah, I don't really, I mean, I need, I need, I need like a nap or I need to go to the spa for a half a day or something. Yeah. I don't need to be away from them for, for a week or two right. just yet. Okay. But I'm sure that's coming. Hopefully not. Um, oh, that's coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it now. Yeah, that's, yeah. Right. No, yeah. that's great. You do. And, and one of my other questions to you was actually how you do find time for yourself mm -hmm. and what, what is that yeah. look like? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> my husband gets on me all the time because I don't take enough time for myself. Um, we have a, a, a nanny. For both the boys one nanny for both boys and she's there from nine to five so i have time to write and go do things but i am home all day i work from home so i close my door and i do my thing but i can hear them like you said knocking on the door and crawling around and doing cute things actually they're about to start walking and she has instruction to knock them down if they start to walk and i'm not there i said literally put them on their butts so that i can see them walk because i've been home for 14 months waiting for them to walk i'm sorry i didn't say that so this morning, do not let them walk until I get home. Um, but I'm making it so I, I'm, I believe that you can create what you want for your life. Right. So I'm creating so that I can have this career that I want, travel, and be a great mommy and be around my children as much as possible. And, I'm, and it's formulating right now. So I don't have an exact answer how to balance it, but I know that it will be so. And, and do you feel that creating your life has very much to do with sort of luck and circumstances, or do you actually think that if you can set your mind to something that you can really achieve it? I don't believe in luck. Okay. I believe in preparedness. Okay. I believe in planning. I believe in execution. Mm -hmm. I believe in, you know, one foot in front of the other. And um, that's what I'm doing, and my husband is supportive of that. And I'm not working full-time now, and he is, and he's he's doing a great job of taking care of the family and allowing me to find myself and build this next phase of my life from modeling to now whatever it is we want to call me. It's wonderful. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Coco, are you ready for some questions? <laughs> well, so as an actress and a comedian, you know, you, you talked about yourself, you know, traveling, working in different yeah. locations, um, and you obviously, you were saying that you do travel with your son. Yes. Um, so how, how do you manage that? Like, how do you manage, you know, being on location, being a mom, son's running around, you know, devoting your time to work? That must be tough. You know, it, it's funny. It, it came second nature because I, it, it, I hate to compare my child to my dog. <laughs> but I mean, I had two dogs before I had my son, so it's I was okay, always manipulating who gonna watch the dogs while I'm on the road. So you know, I called all those same people. <laughs> but, but you know, I, I'm really fortunate that I work with someone like Tyler Perry because we shoot, um, for better or worse, in Atlanta, and we're there anywhere from three to four months. Okay. And he puts us up, you know, in apartments and stuff like that throughout the town. And when I got pregnant, I mean, he made sure that there was a crib. And, and like the, the, the place was baby proof before I even had the baby because he's like, you might pop this thing out while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we came back after the baby, you know, was seven months and we were there for a couple of months, it was the same thing. I had, you know, a two bedroom, one room for my nanny, one for me. He made sure I had everything. So I had a home away from home. And, you know, and I'm grateful to that because, you know, you have a lot of projects you work on. Right. They're not going to accommodate you that and just your kids. That just doesn't right. Exactly. Because I'm working a couple of shows like, your kid coming? 
Okay. Exactly. You know, but, you know, I, I'm very fortunate that Tyler, you know, makes sure that I'm straight. And then, you know, a lot of times for me, like I said, I have a three-day rule. And it's like, I don't leave him for more than three days. But I have nanny cams throughout my house. It's bad. I mean, I have cameras and teddy bears. Because when I'm on the road, I have to know what's going on. I trust my nanny, but still. <laughs> I need to know what's it. Hey, 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 why he in the bathtub too long? You know, it's like, and he's like, what do you mean? How do you know this? You know, but, but you know, I, I had an incident happen with a nanny that, you know, kind of freaked me out, you know, and I'm luckily, you know, thank God for the nanny cam. So now, you know, they're just everywhere. And, you know, I believe in Skype. I believe in FaceTime, you know, because I don't want to miss anything monumental. We were shooting for better or worse when my child was getting ready to walk. Mm -hmm. And I told my brother, because my brother was actually watching him at the time when I was in between nannies. And I said, if he tries to walk, you tell them, get me off set yeah. right now and mm -hmm. Skype me, mm -hmm. like FaceTime me. And he literally walked on FaceTime for the Aww. first time for me. I was on set and I'm like, <laughs> and everybody's yeah. like, what's wrong with you walking? <laughs> but um, you know, I just been fortunate that I've always had a pretty crazy, hectic lifestyle. I mean, being a stand-up, you're in a different city sometimes every night, right. living out of a suitcase for weeks at a time. So when my son, you know, when I became pregnant and became a mom, you know, it, it, and then became a single mom, it was like, okay, how do I incorporate this so that this well, this machine can move, right. you know, you know, well and everybody's mm -hmm. happy. And, you know, it, I just have been very fortunate with the village. I mean, like I said, when I was in Atlanta, I ended up having a fire in Annie. And I was trying to find one in the middle of filming. My brother was like, I ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll come down. Oh. So my younger brother literally came to Atlanta and spent three months right. with me, helping me with my son. You know, and he loves Uncle Trey Trey. So it's great, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when we got back, it was so funny when I interviewed nannies, she didn't know what to expect when I hired her because she's sitting there with these three big dudes like, yeah, so what do you do? <laughs> 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 because they were like, you know, you're taking care of our nephew, That's you great. know. Yeah. And you know, I just have been very fortunate that when I need that time, and I, and I got over the guilt. Don't get me wrong, I still have um, moments of guilt sometimes because I thought at one point my son was connecting too much with his nanny, mm -hmm. and I would come home mm -hmm. and he wouldn't immediately come to me, mm -hmm. and I had a freak out moment. Like I'm your mama, I'm your mama, <laughs> you know. But then I realized, well, he's been with her for the last three days, mm -hmm. and mommy comes home. But now it's to a point when I come home, he knows who mommy is. Mm -hmm. You know, mommy home, mommy home, and mommy go work. He goes and pulls my suitcase out, yeah. you know. Aww. And then, you know, I've made the dreadful mistake of bringing him something every time I come off the road. Yeah. So now when I walk in the door with my suitcase, he's coming suitcase, mama me, mama me. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knows there's something in that suitcase for it. him. Right. But that's how I've incorporated him into my lifestyle. Because okay, yeah. right now, I don't have the option of sitting at home and being mama. I wish I did. Right. But unfortunately, it's just me providing mm -hmm. for him. And, you know, then I got like a staff of six. I mean, it's people I'm managing. And, right. you know, so I have to make sure I have that mommy time. But luckily for me, like I said, I have those people I can call and say, mama need a moment. Right. Mm -hmm. And somebody will come through and say, girl, get your nails done. I got you. Well, I, think, I, think that's, I think that's such an important point, too, yeah. you know, for moms in the audience or future moms. You know, help is, is crucial in finding yeah. good help. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Yeah, whether it's family or even a friend. You know, I've always been afraid to ask for help. I'm an independent woman. I've always had my mm -hmm. own career, you know, and I it's hard for me to call up a friend and just say, hey, I, I need an hour. You know, my nanny's not available. My husband's not here, you know, mm -hmm. or just, you know, just, just to ask. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's okay. It's, but, you know, it doesn't make you a bad mother. It doesn't make you less than a mother. It makes you a sane mother. Yeah. When you take those moments. Because I love my son dearly, but sometimes I'm like, baby, ain't Elmo on? Please go away for a second. <laughs> <laughs> my, 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 nanny, my nanny is a, it was a, a, a single mom to two kids. And when I was, my husband would travel for four months at a time, and I was literally, there were times, you know, yeah. she would say, you just go lock yourself in the bathroom, yeah. no one's going to get hurt, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. And I would like, go lock myself in the bathroom for like two minutes, breathe it out, yes. and then go back, <laughs> and it was like, you, I mean, when you don't have any other options. Yeah, you've got to detox, you got to take a moment, be, for sure. So well, how would you advise, um, Coco, women, um, in terms of planning ahead and having a career and family, what would you say the most important things you need to, you know, have in order to be successful at both work and being a mom? Trial a day planner. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> thank God for the calendar on my iPhone because, I mean, for me, you know, with, with a child, anything can change the drop of a dime. And you have mm -hmm. to have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. I mean, there are times that the nanny has called and said, he's not coming with me today. Can you come get him? And for some reason, he's like, I want mama. I want mama. It's like freak out. Like, we don't know. Mm -hmm. It happens once a month for some reason. And mommy's got to go pick him up. But, I mean, I live a little bit by a calendar. And I have to give myself a to-do list. Because I'll go into mommy mode so quick 
where I'll get up in the morning and say, okay, I need this, I need to do this, do this, and this, and then I'll see he's got dirty clothes. Right. Knowing I have a nanny to do them, but the mommy and me wash the baby's clothes. Okay, he needs to change his linens. Oh, you know what? All these clothes are too small. Let me take these to Salvation Army. <laughs> and then I have to stop and decompress and say, hey, hey, get your business straight. And then you can be mommy. He's in school. You're cool. Mm -hmm. um, a to-do list is so crucial for me. And then sometimes giving myself a pass to do absolutely nothing. That's the hardest part. Um, because being being a businesswoman and running a business, I'm constantly feeling like I have to be doing something. Right. I'm thinking idle time is the devil's workshop. I have to be doing something constantly. Mm -hmm. And becoming a mother taught me how to say, hey, I'm not doing nothing right now. And it may just be sitting there watching the TV and it's not even on. Just having that moment to decompress, you know, but, you know, giving yourself the flexibility that things can change the drop of a dime, but kind of giving yourself a schedule, too. It's like right. a, it's like a curse and a blessing. You got to be able to do balance again. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> that's great. And um, and obviously, comedy is such a huge part of this balance. Motherhood <laughs> My child's like, hey, I mean, there are times where I just sit back and just yeah. laugh. There's nothing else I can do. Yeah. You know? So how have you used comedy in, in dealing with the balance? Well, it's funny, you know, my son is going through, I don't know if any of you have boys, you have boys, get, get ready for it. He's going to realize he has a penis. No, they already know. They already know, okay. <laughs> and he's going to wave to it. He's going to say hi, PP, and bye, PP. So we've given the PP a name. His name is Leroy. Oh. <laughs> so every morning it's like, where's Leroy? Leroy, you know, it's like, I don't know what it is. And I guess that, that penis obsession starts early. <laughs> But I mean, seriously, that's, I mean, I just make kind of jokes about it, you know, for him, I don't, you know, I don't spank my child. I, I will maybe pop a hand every now and then, but, I, but what I've noticed that works really with him is when I grab elbow and hang him upside down. I'm like, do you want elbow to die? And, and, and he's like, no! I said, just act right. Okay. <laughs> and it's funny, poor Elmo is, yeah. We use Elmo. Elmo. We kind of waterboard Elmo sometimes. <laughs> I love it. So that's kind of the, the comedy in it all that. You know, sometimes you just have to utilize what you got yeah. and, and you have to lighten the mood. I mean, my child has done all kinds of things. It just, I mean, you know, he's left presents in the bathtub. He's decided to take his own diaper off and run through the house with company naked. Oh, I mean, and it's like, you know, I just kind of laugh at it. And people, luckily for me, being a stand-up, most people are like, girl, he your child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, no. so it helps, you know. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, so we're going to move on to Kelly. Um, so you brought up guilt, which which I love that you brought that up because it's so honest, and we, we we would all be lying if we didn't say we felt that you know at some point. So talk to us a little bit more about that struggle between you know just really holding on to your career and that defining you and wanting to be a part of that, and also becoming a mother and having this this being to take care of now. Um, whenever I do something, I go all in. It's a hundred percent whatever it is I'm doing, and. Um, when I had Maggie, I couldn't imagine not being with her. So I really felt like I needed to let everything else in my life go, but I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So there was that battle, right. which created this guilt. And I even now that she's seven, she's you know she's off at writing camp this week, and mm -hmm. I it kills me that I'm not with her. Like I know she has to do it. I know she has to go to school, but I like an hour before she gets out of something like school or this writing camp, I'm like there in the parking lot, like ready to get her, you know, like, I, cause I feel like it's just been too long and I need to be with her. Um, so I have a great, great husband who, um, is a former lawyer, now rancher who lives in LA. Um, super complicated, but anyway, he ranches from home. Um, so we're with her when, cause he can, um, so we're with her all the time. Um, and I think that that has, probably helped in a lot of ways, unless I'm away shooting a show, um, and it's always in Canada for some reason these days, um, then I'm just, we're with her. Right. And so we get to spend so much time together. Um, a schedule really helps. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am meticulous about the schedule because I feel like I want our hours together when we're all awake to be productive and fun and all of that. So she wakes up very well rested. She goes to bed at seven and she's up at six. And that is just the way we roll. Um, so that's helped a lot. Um, and when I'm not acting, I'm running my little store romp from home. And again, it's nice. I've been able to create a, a little world um, that is, you know, that is work, but I really like it. And it's super fun. It feels like a hobby and it's out of my home. Um, 
so that she's able to, it, it's a children's store and it's actually completely inspired by my kid. So she winds her way in and out of my work. Um, she'll go, I can s sit in my office and see her playing outside with the dog and she'll be out there for hours and she's like an only child so she totally knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I can sit there and do what I need to do and see her playing outside and I feel like those are my moments when I have no guilt at all and I'm like, I'm so doing this right. Like I am <laughs> such a good mom right now. That's like my favorite moment. It's super short and it doesn't last very long but I do love those moments. It happens yeah. maybe once a week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, you know, and, and you also, you know, to have those moments, it, it does take, you know, prioritizing. And, and you said you're into sort of scheduling out your time. How do you keep your priorities clear? Like, what defines that for you? What are some tools that we can all um, learn? I think, I think whatever it is you're doing, you should feel is quality. And quality time with your family, um, for me, should feel like, and I, that's actually why I love what Catherine does, is I feel like meals are our most important time together. I feel like, you know, Maggie sometimes helps me cook, sometimes she doesn't. Um, she loves your cookbook mm -hmm. because it's so visual and there are kids in it. Um, so I feel like the family table is incredibly important and I will, I will cancel anything I possibly can in order to make sure I sit down with my family um, for whatever meal it is. Um, I feel like so much comes up at that time and I feel like that's such quality time for us. And Maggie has to sit at her, you know, she has to sit there and wait until mommy and daddy are done eating because she's always like, okay, I want to get up and do something. I'm like, well, daddy's still eating. And then I'll ask her another question. She'll totally forget that she wants to get up out of the table and she'll sit and eat some more. Mm -hmm. So um, that is is really important to us. Um, that's a major priority. Um, I also feel like it goes so fast. Right. You know, she's seven already. And I feel like unless you realize right away what your priorities are, when you have a child, you'll miss it. You'll be like, wait a second, I wanted to do this. And um, we're actually moving um, in May. And I've always wanted to surround her with animals, um, especially because she's an only child. I want to surround her with um, horses because my husband grew up in Montana and, and he grew up on a horse. And I feel like I want so much for her to experience that. So for us, we're taking her out of private school because I thought that was a priority. But then when I, I saw this life that we can have, not that much further from LA, that all of a sudden everything else fell away and I'm like, she's gonna have two pigs, two goats, mm -hmm. a wow. sheep and a tortoise and we have a bird already and a dog. And she's gonna have two acres to like go as, be as crazy as she wants mm -hmm. to be. And mm -hmm. I love that I can, you know, have a space for her where she can be really, she's wild. She's <laughs> a wild free spirit. <laughs> and I knew that if you like, come 11, 12 years old, she's just going to be getting in trouble in Studio City. So I feel like if she's got like livestock, um, she's going to stay out of trouble. She's going to be like, I got to clean out the stall so I can't go sneak out. Trust me, she'll grow up really well. I grew up on a farm, so she'll be good. Yeah, so yeah, I, I grew up in Virginia, like, so I had a farm, so yeah, trust me. I think farms good. are good for yeah, girls who are great. Could potentially yeah. be very wild. Um, I, I, of course, got the opposite of me. I'm such a little perfect child, total pleaser, and I've got like Annie Oakley, I'm raising uh, you know, <laughs> like yeah. she's here to teach you. She is. She's my guru. So, okay. so I feel like that's like a big priority thing that we just decided to be brave enough to like really change our lives. Yeah, and, and I I'm think excited that's, about that. I think that's an important point about parenthood and motherhood in general is that we just have to be open to things changing. Priorities change, and it's okay to allow ourselves to sometimes prioritize work too, and sometimes our kids obviously take priority, but. You know, it's okay to allow ourselves to have those moments where, you know, we're, we're changing things up and it works yeah. and eventually they'll adapt too. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, I, I always think about, you know, mindfulness and sort of my journey and parenting. And for me, it really helps to try to be, you know, 100% in the moment as much as I can with whatever I'm doing. And, and, and that sort of helps lessen the guilt of, you know, when I'm working and or with when I'm with my child and feel like I should be working. Um, and, and so what helps you? Like, what, what do you sort of fall back on to really be, be present and, and, and enjoy those, those moments and, and find balance? Well, I think actually, you talk about your child and your guru. My child lives in the moment and really appreciates just what's right in front of her. And it's so simple. And, and that, to me, has been such a lesson, is to just keep it really simple. You don't have to take them to ballet and gymnastics and violin. You know, 
just let them mess around in the backyard and dig. And I think that's also important when you're thinking about also becoming a mother and fertility and um, being ready to have a baby. Um, I really simplified my life. I went to yoga every day. I made that a priority. I made, um, I did hypnobirthing. So I made my little affirmations. I did them every night before bed. And I just really like making sure that I, because I was creating, I thought, I'm like, I'm building a thing in here. Like I'm building all the components of my baby. So I want her to be built with like stress-free happiness, you know? So, so I really try to simplify my life a lot. And of course, it, get, it gets complicated. It's just what happens in life. But if you can step back and really decide this is what's important. This is what needs to happen, um, and really simplify it. I think it will help you in every every aspect of your life, whether it's getting pregnant and also taking the stress out of that. Because um, I actually got pregnant super fast, like way faster than I expected to be pregnant, and all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, guess we're doing this now. <laughs> and then when I did think I was going to have another one, it wasn't easy, and I had a miscarriage. And it kind of scared me off. But I also wasn't in the same place I was when I got pregnant super fast. I was really, it was simpler for me then. And I feel like, um, I feel like that just carries over into being a parent, is just Absolutely. to keep it really, really simple. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful point. So now that we've heard from all of our wonderful panelists, I'd love to open it up to the audience and see if anyone has any questions to throw at us or anything that you'd like to discuss. Anything? I want to know about pigs. I actually, I love what, what every single one of you said. Um, and I mean, I have a two-year-old. I'm your people pleaser. I mean, I'm 45, and I had my baby when I was 43. <laughs> <laughs> and he's two, and he's amazing. He's my, my greatest gift, but he's like one and done. <laughs> but no, it's, it's interesting because when I was about to have him, I was like yearning to get back into health and I've been looking for him for a really long time, got offered a job and then actually was like, had to make a decision to not take the job for, because I was at risk, you know, so it was one of those things. And then I had Milo and three months, four months later, I got offered a TV job, producing, you know, and so I went And then, you know, nine months later, I was like, did it? But this is not the kind of life. Like, I'm not with Tony, but it's keeping it simple. It's like, you know, it was amazing to be able to go dive back into, like, like you said, it's like living my life and what my dream was. But, you know, having a child, I was like, you know, did I want a baby more than I wanted to get back into this career? You know, I wanted a baby to get back into this career space. Like, you know, it's all remembering, like, how much you want something and honor that and mm -hmm. really, like, be still and let it be simple and let him really like now I'm back and I'm running my business from home. And it's so funny, I joke, like, this is how this is going to work when you're 40 years old. And I'm like, really, really place. You know, right. All the kids can play and all the moms can just travel and circle. Right. Like, like yeah. That place, off, right? That's yeah. a great idea. Like, so many needs to do that. So yeah. it's just, but like what you said, Tinko, about like I'm figuring it out. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm allowing myself to do some writing mm -hmm. and do this thing and then like coming to my knees as like a mom mm -hmm. and boys and like, being a single mom it's such a like integrate and to hear just these beautiful like journeys and so Catherine literally is like you know you working from home you're taking care of kids you're home it's like it honestly is such a like um fresh take on these five you know stories that are so beautiful and I think the hardest part is working from home like for me personally my mm -hmm. struggle is like I have the one that's like how do I look out and I can hear him beeping at me and he's so mean and I'm like And I think that, like, listening to you guys is really making me angry and raising my anger. That even though it's tough to, like, tell anybody, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, it's, it's a trip and it is really hard. And I think, like, asking for help from fellow women mm -hmm. who are doing, like, Holy and I are, like, work with each other, like, indirectly. And, like, we'll be like, preschool. What, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where? yeah. And I think that's such a, I think what you guys kind of exemplify, at least for, like, somebody who have a child or has a child or thinking about having a child is that there is not one way to do it. Mm -hmm. There's a 
I think that's one thing I, I love about being on this panel right now is that what works for every individual on this is what works for you. And people right. tell you to read this book and read that book and follow this guideline. But you know what? You've got to find the system that works best for you. Yeah. And, and there's a lot to be said for, I mean, I live every day being like the grass is always greener. You know, I mean, and, and I have moms that work full time. They don't, they literally leave at seven. They come home at, at seven. They're driving so fast to try to get there for bedtime. And they always, oh God, you get to work from home. And then, you know, then you do like take it down, keep it simple. And then you're like, I miss work. I don't think there is any day there that is. anything is perfect. No. And just trying to you know, do what works for your life because right. everyone's life always looks better, but everyone deals with the same Absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the so reasons true. why I, 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 I have not ever joined a mom's group because you hear so many different stories and then you start to feel like, am I doing that right? Am I doing this wrong? Yeah. So I just kind of, I'm sailing my own ship and figuring it out yeah. and feeling what's comfortable for me and for my husband and for my children. And, you know, I have my girlfriends that I can call up when I really need to have an answer. But for the most part, I want to um, be present and be mindful. And something about having my children later in life, just a quick little side note, has made me really aware of my mortality and how precious every second is with them. So the blog can wait for the extra five minutes if I can just go and look at them in the face. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. really made, because oh, yeah. I'm a type A, I mean, I have a list for everything, sure. but it's really made me breathe into motherhood. So yeah. um, that's that. that's something that I find works for me. Breathe I agree with into so motherhood, I love that. I, I, I put my son that. in there just for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I had a full-time daddy. I didn't have yeah. to put my son in preschool, yeah. but I did that to give me a schedule. Right. He goes at 8.30, He's home at five o'clock. And that works for you. So I'm you up know? at six. Yeah. I'm with him, helping the nanny get him. And when he walks to that door, I'm off that computer. Phones are down. Don't talk to me. Perfect. So it really helps me give me, it gives me that schedule that right. this is his time. Yeah. I'm in this moment. Everything else can wait. Yeah, I mean, I work from, I work every day. I take my kids to school. I start work at whatever, 9, 9.30. Mm -hmm. I finish at like 2.30. But I am back to work again every day from eight to midnight, and that's not going to work for a lot of people. But it's it's I want to be with my you know I'm it works in for this, you. Yeah. yeah it works for me exactly. That's so great. Yeah, you know, and and just to kind of close up because we're running out of time. Um, but you know, when I first heard oh, there's two questions. Okay, let's go quickly. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that's a good one. Um, you know, I I do travel. You know, to speaking engagements and and TV and and so the, you know that I try to do. Um, so when I'm home, I think what's non-negotiable for me um, is, God, that's tough because my schedule is always changing. Um, you might have to get back to me, but I think what's non-negotiable for me is just being mindful in the, whatever moment I'm in. You know, I never want to miss bedtime. I usually try to get home or bu build my dinners or events around that. And if I'm meeting someone, I'll do it after or before. Um, but... Um, for me, it's just the mindfulness component. I wouldn't say it's like one particular event. Of course, meals are phenomenal if you can make that happen. Um, but I try not to, to pressure myself so much. I find that when I do, it's just more stressful and it really doesn't matter. What matters is is the quality of the moment and that's what I, what I focus on. Um, so that's whether it's a meal, whether it's, yeah, whether it's just, you know, crazy and he looks at me and says, you know, mama, hi. You know, it's just those those little, finding joy in those little moments and connecting. Because, you know, it's it's really not, I learned this, you know, early on, it's it's not even about quantity, it's really about quality. And it sounds like a cliche, but but it's so true. And so I really try to maximize those, mm. those, those little moments um, and be present for them. And for me, um, terms like non-negotiable scare me. Um, I'm very, I'm very, I try to be as fluid as possible. And so I could say it's non-negotiable today, but then tomorrow right. I might feel differently. So there, you know, it, as far as your question is concerned, I don't, I don't have any. 
I don't have any. I just flow. Mm. I kind of, I hope, I try to flow as best as I can. <laughs> as I always have. Yeah. I think for me, it's respecting my child as a person. I don't know if that's like a non negotiable, negotiable. But I think that's my, um, when I feel like, if I'm, you know, that's the test. Is it respectful of who she is as a person? Like, I was going to say electronics are pretty much non-negotiable. I, we don't let her have them. She cannot, she doesn't have an iPad. She will not have an iPad unless it's at school and she's doing a project. Um, but for me, that comes down to respect. I don't feel like I'm respecting her as a person if I stick her in front of something that I just need her to be babysat by or, or that I just let her kind of go off into this world that doesn't exist. So for me, and I'm, that's actually part of my little store, is getting people to unplug their kids and not use electronics um, as a teaching tool and getting them involved in the tactile world. And that, for me, is huge. But it, that comes back to feeling like I'm respecting her as a person. And for me, I know a lot of people don't agree with this. It's just my perspective. I think that that comes back to um, teaching them and having them be entertained constantly with electronics. There you go. <laughs> um, my non-negotiable is my, my date night with my husband. Because if mommy and daddy aren't good, nobody's good. <laughs> Been there, done that. Been there, done that. Um, you know, it's like I used the term non-negotiable with my nanny the other day. Um, he had him for, I, I was out of town twice last week in Atlanta and New York, and he had him for like four days straight. And when I came home, I said, you got the next four days off. And he goes, well, do I still get paid? I said, of course you do. He said, but why do I have off? I said, because I'm mama, and I'm going to be mama for four days, and I'm going to take him to school, and I'm going to pick him up, and I'm going to take him to the park, and I'm going to do these things with him because mama been gone. That's non-negotiable. And so he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so when I come home, and I've been, especially when I've been on the road and I come home, I'm in mommy mode. And I make sure that I have days off so that I can be present and I can be the one that he walks in the room when he wakes up and he's calling for mommy. And I'm the one that picks him up and he runs and says, hey, mommy. And we go to the park and we go to the McDonald's and play in the playland or whatever. He, he's going to have mommy all to himself while mommy's in town. Well, I was pumping for two. <laughs> um, I was really fortunate that I was able to stay home for, well, till now, but but definitely while while they were younger. So I just pumped, and again, if you haven't figured this out, I'm a kind of do my own thing kind of woman. So I would pump where I needed to pump. I had to pump on the plane. I had to pump. I had I got a job. Where was I? I my, I left my pump at home. I called my friends up. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. But you, um, I think that you create the scenario that you want and then you invite people that believe that to support you so that you can have um, a, a, a safe space to be. So you don't feel like, well, I want to work and I want to build my career, but I want to take care of my children. Like if you have a community around you that supports that, then you feel um, more empowered yeah. to walk that path. That's a huge yeah. point. Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, I, I found out who my friends were when I became a mom. And I didn't know, like, because I'd like drink with some of my friends. And then, like, there were some friends I think convinced me to go shopping sometimes, get my nails done, which I hate. You know, <laughs> like, I did things with them before I had a child. But when you have a kid, you have to know who your friends are. And you really need to surround yourself with people who build you up and who are supportive. Maybe yeah. they're not exactly like you, mm -hmm. but who think, I'm so glad she's sitting in the office having a conference call with two pumps stuck mm -hmm. on her. Yeah. Like, God bless her. Like, that's what you want. And, and you don't want people, you don't want to feel judged. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I was still modeling when I had my son, and that was such a non-negotiable. From talking about non-negotiables, yeah, I was like, my son, like I want to breastfeed, and I remember being in the hospital and then pushing the formula on me, yeah. and I was like, I was like, why, why I home birthed the second time because of that experience, yeah. because I was like, why am I being held down? So I think that when yeah. you really you know, like owning, it's so hard because every milestone of what preschool, what are you going to feed your child, whatever owning your choices and just yeah. sort of not needing a book or a doctor or anyone to validate that yeah. just ch choosing your own path for your family you do what yeah. you got to do i mean eight weeks yeah. after having my son i got an offer to be on the tv show psych all the way in canada and i was in virginia with my parents and it was one of those offers where i'm like okay i gotta take this and I'm literally on the plane pumping. And I get to Canada, I'm pumping. And I'm putting it in the freezer. And I'm checking on it every day. And I'm on set pumping. And it's so funny because Dulé Hill, that's on the TV show site, kept coming to my dressing room going, are you pumping? Because <laughs> <laughs> he knew I was in there pumping, you know, because I had to pump and make sure I was still good. And then I pumped like crazy before I left to make sure my son was OK. And then I'm coming home on the plane with this little freezer pack. <laughs> Is what I had to do. You know, you just do what you got to do. You do, and you make a left turn if you feel like you're like, you know, this isn't the right path. Like that's exactly what we're doing right now. I mean, I actually am in a situation where I'm kind of surrounded by a lot of people I just don't see eye to eye with, and it it makes me a little uncomfortable. And I want to be in a place where I feel like we can just be us and not have to feel like we're trying to measure up in any way, and where we can just be, you know, grungy if we want to be, or I can let. I mean, I've had moms literally like come to pick their kid up and they're like, oh, they played in the dirt? And like, um, uh, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. that's yeah. what, they're seven and yeah. there's a backyard. She's like, oh, she doesn't usually play in the dirt. I'm like, okay, sorry, don't come oh, over again, you know? I'm so sorry, I have to cut, I have to cut because we're, we're running out of time. But I think the bottom line here is that we all just need to be supportive of each other and, mm -hmm. and really, you know, not judge and be supportive of our choices. But I want to thank all of our panelists for being here today with mm -hmm. us and our audience. And please continue the conversation, you know, tweet us, Facebook, FP, um, LA 14, and I want to thank our sponsor, um, Works by Nicole Williams, um, for supporting this conversation, and to Fora.tv um, for recording this. All this is going to be on um, the website as well, on Fertility Planet, free to watch later, and all the videos as well. And um, thank you all for being here with us today. Thank you.